It's amazing that there aren't more injuries to the foot, but the foot is able and is designed in order to actually take and withstand that type of, of force to it. And so when everything works well, it's great. It also suspends the coffin bone or the pedal bone. Uh, and that's something, again, that I think many don't really appreciate, that the coffin bone doesn't sit on the sole of the foot, but actually is suspended within the capsule of the, of the hoof itself. So it's actually quite a dynamic process that keeps it in, in place. And if you actually were to look at the hoof in cross-section, and again, this is taking the hoof wall and taking a cut across it, this being the outside of the hoof wall, this being the point where the pedal bone actually is connected to the hoof wall, you'll see the little tubules, and the little tubules actually play a very important part. This is actually the hoof off, with, uh, off the foot itself, and you can see all these little extensions, and those are actually lamellar tissue that holds it or helps to provide it. And so the tubules are actually designed um, to redirect cracks, to redirect forces. And you'll notice that on the outside, these tubules are very dense. You can't really see them. But as you get into the more inner portion of the hook wall, you can see you can actually see each individual tubule. And that's a design that's specific for the horse so that it's able to dissipate the forces that are, are um, mechanical energy that actually the foot absorbed each time it lands, especially at high speeds. So these mechanical energy is transferred from the most rigid, those being closest together, to the <coughs> most uh, uh, le least dense, and those are the inner ones, all right? And then that's transferred to the lamella tissue and then to the bone. So without that, you would have more injury to the bone and to the other tissues without that kind of design. So again, it's a unique uh, organ. I call the foot the organ of the horse uh, because it actually has both musculoskeletal, has vascular, has, uh, and has integument, skin, involved with it. Let's take a closer look, really, at this. And so if we were to take one of those little sections of lamellar tissue, this is what you'd see if you were to put it under a microscope and then under an electron microscope. You can see that it has these main extensions, which you see coming off here, and then you have these little extensions from there, uh, which are actually part of that. And what that does is that actually provides a very strong um, adherence between the bone, lamella tissue, and the hoof wall. And if we were to look at it and take one of these uh, apart, this is what it would look like. You can see many little deviations where the uh, lamellar tissue, this is the insensitive and then the sensitive lamellar tissue actually interdigitate. And if you take your fingers and put them together, that would be very similar to the lamellar tissue. And I'll show you a slide or a video in a few minutes that actually shows what happens when this lamellar tissue actually fails. All right, so when the hoof works well, it's great. But when it has problems such as laminitis, et cetera, it's, it's uh, really kind of a sad event. And if we actually look at a, a computer tomography, a CT scan of the foot, you can see that the foot is bathed in, in lots of these vessels. And these are veins, and this is actually very important in thermoregulating the heat. So if you go into the barn in the morning and the horse's foot feels cool at that moment, you come back several hours later and what? It feels hot. What's happening is the foot, and I'll show you in a minute how that actually adapts. It actually adjusts for thermoregulation. So if, if, if the body is trying to conserve heat, it will be cool to the touch. If it's trying to remove heat from the body, it will actually be warm to the touch. And you see that certainly with inflammation, and laminitis is just one example of that.